You're listening to Experience Imagination, a themed entertainment design podcast presented by Falcons Creative Group. Every episode, we discuss a new topic with a panel of creative professionals. Hi, I'm Cecil McPurry, President and Chief Creative Officer of Falcons. Welcome to another episode of Experience Imagination. I'm your host, Audrey DeLong. Florida is now known as one of the best states for innovation and a popular area for entrepreneurial growth. Orlando specifically is at the forefront of an exciting movement regarding the metaverse. There are a lot of reasons why the Sunshine State is climbing the ranks so rapidly, and I'll dive into them with a few special guests in just a little bit. One organization that is helping write Orlando's next chapter is the Orlando Economic Partnership, which is engaging leaders to develop a strategic framework for the region's future. I'll speak with David Adelson, the partnership's chief innovation officer, who will share his vision for Central Florida and why he thinks this region's future technology growth is unstoppable. I'm also going to have a conversation with Brian Kornfeld and Lauren Prager from Synapse Florida, a nonprofit that connects entrepreneurs, investors, and other stakeholders to accelerate success in Florida's thriving economies. We'll talk about the organization's history, what it strives to accomplish, and its increasingly popular events. The next one, Synapse Orlando, is happening Friday, October 21st at the Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts in downtown Orlando. It will welcome more than 2,000 attendees, 100 speakers, 80 exhibitors, and dozens of sponsors. In fact, Falcons Beyond is the official presenting sponsor, so we're very excited about that. We are thrilled that our own Falcons, Jason Ambler and Saham Ali, will be featured speakers on the main stage. They'll talk about technology's role in the future of entertainment. Saham will also take a seat on a metaverse-focused panel. Additionally, Vice President of Corporate Strategy at Falcons Beyond, Tori Erton, will speak on a panel about innovation and hospitality. At the event, we're also hosting a special type of demo showcasing some of our own technology developed inside Falcons X-Lab. My final guest in this episode is Yvette Whitaker, Chief Corporate Officer of Falcons Beyond. Yvette has been with the company since the very beginning in 2000. She has overseen so much of the growth that the company has enjoyed and has been a guiding light in a lot of ways. I'm sure that we'll have fun stories to share about our own experience with innovation. Before we get to those interviews, though, let's bring in our CEO, Cecil Magpuri. Hello, Cecil. Hi, Audrey. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Really good. I love this topic, right? Building a culture of innovation. Me too. <laughs> it's something you focused on, right? When you started the company 22 years ago. Tell us about that. I'm a big fan of technology. You know, obviously, technology is a big part of our life. And in my early years creating the actual company, it, it stems from a lot of my own personal background and my journey. I was fortunate enough to get into the architectural side of the industry, and one of the first jobs I was fortunate enough to work on was um, taking the analog drawing technology and start working in CAD, right, computer-aided drafting. And so I was the first to kind of introduce that ecosystem in an architectural firm in San Diego when I was working through college. And I was an artist and, and, and an architect as well. But I was able to understand how to take that medium and use a technology and not make it feel so industrial, like a mechanical drawing. It still looked like hand drawings. So I was able to manipulate some of the code to make it feel like a hand drawing, even though it was AutoCAD. So early in my career, I was able to understand both the technology aspects of it and the art of design. I uh, was fortunate enough to work at iWorks Entertainment, where I got introduced to projection design technology. And so lensing logic, manipulation of light through lens and glass, that allows us to be more creative because we know that the technology can actually support this imagination of ours. That's so true. Sometimes we look for the technology in the field, and sometimes it doesn't exist. Exactly. We have, we have to, come to create up with it. it. On our own. Yeah, and that's why we have our X Lab uh, and our R&D division. So innovation is a big part of our DNA, from my background all the way to starting the company, and of course, embracing resources and individuals who continue to champion that vision for Falcons Beyond. Yeah, so true. So I did want to talk about Synapse Orlando. Uh, This is uh, the first year Falcons Beyond is a presenting sponsor at Synapse. Of course, they haven't been around that long. But tell us why you wanted Falcons Beyond to be the presenting sponsor at Synapse Orlando. 
the actual timing. Isn't it incredible that as Falcons Beyond matures and, and becomes you know, significant in the technology world, so does Orlando. And Synapse becomes that platform to allow all the companies that are here in Central Florida to really shine and show our weight when it comes to the metaverse, the Web3, the technology world. So this is the perfect platform for us to kind of invest our uh, presence, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so we're really excited about our presence at Synapse. Yes, us too. And we're, we're going to be talking to them in just a little bit. But thank you, Cecil, for teeing this up. You bet. I'm extremely happy to welcome Mr. David Adelson to the podcast. Hi, David. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thank you for joining us. I, I really want to start with who David Adelson is, if you don't mind. You have a hospitality background. You've worked in executive positions with some of the biggest names in the hotel business. And then you founded a company called Intelity, which became a multi-million dollar SaaS leader. That's software as a service. Give us a peek behind the scenes of the Intelity story and tell us what drives you. Well, first, thanks for having me. It's great to be here today. And back long ago, I used to manage some very large hotels, uh, spent about 15 years with Hyatt and Marriott and Hilton and some other brands and uh, saw some needs in the marketplace right around 2008. And those needs were self-service technology in the hospitality space. It just didn't exist. We didn't have our smartphones. We didn't have iPads. We didn't have tablets. Uh, so I wanted to seek out to create a self-service platform that allowed guests to check in, check out, order room service, make a wake-up call. Uh, and that company grew globally and really just became a best-of-breed solution. And the name of that company was Intelity. Uh, but it was an amazing journey as an entrepreneur uh, to learn how to build a company how to go through the excitement and pain of building that company, and then eventually uh, to have the satisfaction uh, to be able to sell that company one day. All right. Well, we have you to thank for all of what we have at our fingertips these days. So thank you for that. And a lot of other great minds, for sure. <laughs> right. So I want to shift gears to what you're doing right now. And that is uh, you've been at the Orlando Economic Partnership for about a year. So maybe sum up what the partnership does. What would you say its mission is? Yeah. So aside from broad-based prosperity, of course, and some of the other core missions that we have, uh, you can think about the Orlando Economic Partnership as truly the voice of the business community. Our body, our makeup of our members and investors uh, are investing in economic growth. They want to see companies come to Orlando. They want to see companies thrive. Uh, we want to create jobs. We want to create higher paying jobs, of course. And we want to create industry here. We want to have an area where we're growing talent and making Orlando a place-making destination that you can work, you can live, you can play, and you can very successfully set up a business here as well. Yeah, for sure. So one of the interesting things about your background, too, I don't want to pass this up, is you're the founder and driving force behind a movement to position Orlando as the center of the metaverse. First off, we know what the metaverse is. It's been much discussed. It's not just one thing or one movement. There are a lot of components. But in my opinion, the bottom line is the metaverse allows people to engage in, in highly immersive, interactive experiences that change how we do things. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And what's most interesting about that is when you look at innovation, uh, we don't look at today. We look 10 years from now. So, for example, Intelity, uh, that started in 2008, but that innovation was five, six years away uh, before self-service hospitality technology ever existed. So when we look at innovation, we look a little, a little further ahead. When you look at the metaverse and where things are moving and migrating in that space, you begin to look at what those building blocks are that actually make up the components of the people that are actually building for that new world. And what's interesting when you begin to break down those components, they exist as VR, AR, 3D simulation, artificial intelligence, gaming, and then IoT, which would be semiconductors. Those five industries are the staples of Central Florida. And those staples have been here for over a decade, if not longer. So we clearly have the building blocks. We are the center of what's being built for the metaverse, which makes us the meta center. And while a lot of cities right now are looking at how they live in this new world of the metaverse, here in Orlando, we're not so much thinking about how we live in it. We're thinking about how we supply developers and companies with the tools that they need to build towards this new world. Uh, so that's what makes this so special here in Central Florida that 
we have been in stealth mode for so long with all of these different industries that we have been powerhouses in, but you put them all together into the metaverse and it makes us one very powerful economic destination. Yeah, I was definitely going to get around to that because there are some other ingredients too. the educational system, for instance. Think about UCF as an example. So UCF, the faculty and staff at UCF on VR and AR are the most proficient and educated staff of any other university in the country. I did not know that. So that's just one marker that sits inside of VR AR. Another marker is Unity. Uh, Unity is a very large company that is a gaming engine and it powers most of what's being built towards this metaverse right now. The largest concentration of developer licenses are right here in Central Florida. Oh, wow. In the country. I mean, our talent coming out of these universities and these companies that are currently building inside of this space are not just building for Central Florida. They are building things for companies all over the world right now. And that largest concentration is right here. And the military, right? Because of the simulation industry? Absolutely. The simulation industry here is a $6 billion industry. $6 billion with a B. And, you know, when you really start to peel back what these layers are and these building blocks that are making up the metaverse, it's so clear uh, that we have such a foundation here to be a part of that new world. That sounds really good. I do want to end our conversation by talking about Synapse, Orlando specifically, you know, which I touched upon in the introduction. At this year's event, the partnership is going to unveil something pretty cool and impressive. Tell us what that is. Oh, you mean the digital twin? Yes. Yes. So our digital twin is not only immersive, but incredibly exciting. It's an 800 square mile representation of our great city in a 3D tool that allows you to literally zoom in, see commercial real estate that's available, see roadways, traffic patterns. But this virtual twin, we have been working towards this for well over the the past year. And this digital twin is is not only exciting, but it also gets to be um, located right in our brand new offices uh, that just opened not even two months ago. But Synapse will also have a lot of other features this year. And some of those features really are very meta center centric. So uh, you'll get to learn about VR and AR. You'll get to learn about simulation. Uh, you'll get to learn about what it takes to be an entrepreneur right now um, and why Orlando has been uh, rated the number one best place to start a business in this country by WalletHub. Uh, so you'll get to see some of the great awards that we've won this past year and see them demonstrated at this celebration of innovation and technology at Synapse. So just to plug the website for themedicenter.org, you can go there to learn more about this exciting endeavor. Absolutely. So just go ahead and take a look at themedicenter.org. Uh, and right there, it kind of breaks down each one of these things that we're talking about and and how you can become more engaged in where we're headed. All right, David. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. It's time to welcome Brian Kornfeld, the CEO and co-founder of Synapse Florida, along with his chief strategy officer, Lauren Prager. Thanks for being here. Our pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. All right. So before we get into Synapse's history, let's talk about the culture of innovation across the state of Florida. Florida has a really long and rich history of innovation. There is uh, technology and creativity and inspiration really from coast to coast in every aspect of our state. And if you think about um, the evolution now, innovation is a buzzword that carries all across different industries and different communities, but it's really been a part of who we are as a community, as a state. And what's really been interesting as Synapse has gotten a chance to connect with communities all across the state of Florida is the consistent collaboration and the desire to really enable each other to succeed. Innovation is a team sport and you can only succeed when you've got the players working alongside of you to help you through this process. And what's been really exciting is to see how that has blossomed and now is being recognized internationally by people who are paying more attention to Florida. So all of us who have been working behind the scenes really for decades now are getting the recognition, the notice, people are seeing what we are all capable of. And I think it's interesting, you know, speaking with you all and the work that happens at Falcons Beyond, so much is behind the scenes. And now, you know, in the roles that you're taking, the work that you're doing on the global scene, it's a great example of the history of innovation now finally being able to be recognized and out in front and part of the headlines. That's a really great way to put it. It's, it's, uh, I like how you say uh, innovation is collaborative and it shouldn't be a race to just see who finishes first. Um, and that, that's how we work internally, too, at Falcons. Um, obviously, to continue topping ourselves is really where our biggest competitor in that area. Brian, did you have anything to add to that? 
the entire communities and people who want to participate in the innovation communities, there's a home for them somewhere. And there are so many groups around the state that are trying to find everybody who wants to be a part and to welcome them in and to, with open arms and to say, how can we help? Some of this uh, might have spurred a little bit from Mayor Suarez in Miami and his famous response of a company saying, I'm thinking about moving to Miami. And his response was, how can I help? And that just really helps to spur people along and propel them to the next level. I love that. And I think it probably plays into Synapse Florida's culture as well. So let's talk about that. How did you start Synapse and and why? Going back into 2016 and 2017, the communities around Florida were so fragmented, were so disconnected. The companies that were here that had been growing for a long time were not getting engaged with the local communities education was lacking. There there was just no place for talent to go. And it was leading to problems of groups, these companies that were all just trying to leave the state. The talent was flocking to California and to Chicago and to New York because that's where they thought they had to go to get good jobs. And so Synapse was brought together in a grassroots effort by a couple of people who said, we want to solve this problem. We don't want to do this for us. We want to give back to the community and create this nonprofit that will be here to help to connect the community, that will help to organize the community, and that will really help to celebrate the community. And by bringing everybody together, we really push towards our vision of making Florida the world's next great innovation community, and we're well on our way towards that. We think really strategically about the stakeholders that are important to ensuring a successful innovation community. We think about institutions like government and higher education, and you think about the role that corporate innovation plays, and here in Florida especially, the way that that spurs innovation and has a trickle-down effect, whether it's through funding or partnerships or pilots or incubating new ideas and new companies. Obviously, investors are an important part of the ecosystem. There's just an amazing number of growth stage entrepreneurs who are building incredible companies. And we think about talent. We've all seen the statistics of the incredible move of people to Florida. And these are students, of course, but these are mid-career professionals. These are people who maybe are more senior in their careers and looking to figure out what's next. They are bringing a wealth of knowledge and opportunity and experience into our communities. And so when we think talent, we think really, really broadly about how we can engage those incredible resources into our community and to do this in a really strategic and purposeful way. You know, when when something grows as successfully as Synapse Florida has, it seems like, oh, yeah, we saw a problem and and we found a solution and we fixed it and and now it's off and running. But there's so much work that goes into it. Um, And I'm kind of curious, like, how did Synapse become so successful in, in such a short amount of time, other than a lot of hard work, I'm sure? A lot of hard work and an incredible, small, but mighty team. Uh, I mean, when I think about the sacrifice that a lot of these team members have gone through and put themselves through to enable to make this happen, I I look at Lauren, who's sitting right here next to me, who was a volunteer for months before actually coming on and being a part of this team and sacrificed herself and her time to transform her life and her career and other team members who have come on board We have people who contribute from the community, not just because they feel like they have to, because they want to see the community succeed as well. And that's their way of leaving their mark on the community. Yeah, you know, big kudos to your team for all the success you've had. Very well deserved. Uh, Now I want to get into talking about the events uh, that Synapse hosts. The Fall Synapse event isn't the only in-person gathering, right? There are summits and, and smaller community gatherings. Tell us about those. We believe really strongly in the sanctity of space, of getting people together. We've seen now what it means to be in a fully virtual world. And there's certainly a different experience when you lock eyes with other people, you share a coffee or a drink with other people, you're in a shared space with that person, you show up. And the power of showing up is so important. When we hosted the first Synapse Summit back in 2018, we expected maybe 1,000 people to show up and 3,500 people showed up. And we thought maybe 50 companies would come to exhibit and share what they're working on. And 250 companies came to exhibit. And, you know, we were blown away 
by the response of the community. And we continue to hear from people who said, I chose to move to Florida because the density of opportunity and the creative people that I got to interact with at these events. And that's why we do them. We always gather in Tampa for the statewide innovation celebration in the February timeframe. And then we've been invited to come to Orlando. And we've been doing that now for the last few years, always in October in partnership with the Orlando Economic Partnership. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Synapse Orlando 2022 or, or any Synapse event, really, anybody can go. Is that right? We want to welcome and open the doors to anybody who wants to buy a ticket. We do things like student scholarships or scholarship exhibitor tables to make sure that price is not a barrier because that's such an important thing for people who may just be getting this first opportunity um, or who might be still learning and working off of a, a very limited budget we want them to be able to come and to be a part of this community as well. And that's a part of that value of being community first and being willing to open the doors to the masses. We offer through the generous support of the community, student scholarships as well as scholarships for active duty and veterans and first responders. They bring so much creativity and ingenuity and drive and focus and have learned so much from those partnerships. We really feel that it's an opportunity to give back to our military men and women and our veteran community to encourage them to be a part of this. And literally, companies have been launched as a result of people who have come through the Synapse community because they found the resources and partnerships. So even for people who don't know if they belong, you belong. Even for people who've never come to an innovation event, not really sure. This is an opportunity to learn and be exposed to what innovation is and really what's going on in your own backyard. It definitely sounds like a unique opportunity for a wide range of groups. What a conglomeration of, of people. Is there anything in particular you are looking forward to at October's event? Well, for me, I'm really looking forward to uh, the Falcons exhibit because I, <laughs> I hear it's going to be incredible. One of the things that I always love is the stories that I hear after. And those stories don't happen if you don't show up. And those stories in, of the meaningful change cannot happen if you don't give yourself the opportunity. One of the many parts of Synapse Orlando that I'm super excited about are the exhibitors. So this year, 100 exhibitors will come together at the Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center as really a centerpiece, filling up four floors of experiences at the venue. And it's really an amazing and hands-on way to understand what's going on in our community, to meet the creators and the talent that's driving innovation. And when you've got these giant companies next to really small startups, it's another example of the magic that happens, but um, we really work hard and closely with those exhibitors and give them a place to have some visibility to the broader Orlando community. Synapse will continue to grow and continue to find ways to access these companies, to access this talent and, and really bring them in the fold of the community and, and all have everybody use one voice and one message to propel Florida to the next level. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys do. And uh, it's been fascinating to just listen to you two talk about Synapse and the growth of Orlando and Florida in general. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you very much for having us. Thank you for being part and giving back to the community through the work that you've done the last 20 plus years building Falcons Beyond in Orlando. You are a perfect example of the innovation that's been um, creating the foundation in the region and really for the state. And so we're so excited that you're a part of the Synapse community. We're really grateful that we'll have an opportunity to hear from the leadership and share the Falcon story and experience the creative genius that we have, that we know is part of your team when we all get together in just a few weeks for Synapse Orlando. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for saying that. That was really sweet. And uh, we definitely look forward to the event and everything leading up to it. Before we transition to our final guest, I want to share some cool news. The Orlando Sentinel named Falcons Beyond one of the top workplaces of 2022. An independent third party gathers feedback directly from employees, and that's the only basis for determining which employers make this elite list. So we want to thank everyone at Falcons who participated. 
This is a nice segue into our conversation with Yvette Whitaker, Chief Corporate Officer at Falcons Beyond, because she has helped drive much of the vision for our studio's culture, and she has always been the biggest cheerleader here. Thanks for carving out time for this, Yvette. Hi, Audrey. Thanks so much for having me. All right, so let's get right into the beginning of Falcons. When Cecil and Marty and you opened the doors to the studio back in 2000, did you imagine that Falcons would be designing its own attraction systems and technologies? Yeah, well, Cecil taught me really early on that a major ingredient of our secret sauce had to revolve around technology. Um, But what's important here is that technology had to be completely transparent to the guests. And in our early years, we quickly realized that the power of growing our technology offerings in-house was really important to us. So we started to really, you know, focus our attention to that. And believe me, it was not easy to find back then, uh, these resources. But they were out there. And what attracted those resources to Falcon, I think, is the culture of innovation that we were focused on building at that time. And we've worked really hard, and eventually we've blossomed into a tech-forward design firm that we are today. So I'm really proud of that. That leads into another question I actually had. Since you were here at the beginning, you were probably involved in a lot of the hiring decisions, or every single one of them. That would be my guess, um, at least for, for a long while. So you definitely put an emphasis on people who could play in the technology sandbox. Is that right? Definitely. And and I love to see our research and development team in action. I just love it. Uh, we have such a diverse pool of Falcons that participate in this R&D effort. You know, they range from engineers to designers to coders and storytelling. Everyone participates. And we push the envelope downstairs in our Falcons X lab. It's our innovation laboratory, and every idea has merit. Um, Egos are checked at the door, and everyone's goals are the same, basically. And I think people that have had a chance to experience our process can see it, and they can feel it, and they just want to be part of it. Yeah, you know, it's not like one person's name is on something. It's not like you go to a company because you're like, oh, I want to invent something and put my name on a patent and then move to the next company. Yeah. It's like we're just a big group of mad scientists. (laughs) So that's the mentality here. Um, But with your long history with Falcons, I I want to talk about the process because you've probably seen it evolve. Um, There were a lot of great innovative ideas right off the bat, but I'm wondering about the process itself. How has that changed? You know, we do continue to refine our process. That is true. But what I think really changed for us over the years is the growth of the team and the diversity of talent that contribute to our R&D process here. Um, But ultimately, the real reward comes when a group of ideas come and they evolve into a product, you know. But once we put the guests into that product... And in the middle of that action, that's really when the magic happens. And I feel once we develop a solution and that solution or that idea goes full circle um, from ideation to fruition, it just serves to ignite our passion of innovation even greater. And we can't wait to start the process all over again. So, Yvette, do you have any extra special memories of the fruits of this kind of labor? Actually, I do have a funny memory, and that's when Cecil came up with a creative vision to deliver a virtual underwater experience unlike any other at the time. And that, of course, had to include mermaids. And uh, he felt in order to really pull it off, he needed the upper body of a real woman, and later we'd add a CG tail. And this involved a very intricate media shoot underwater with what at the time were extremely expensive and hard to source red cameras. But before all that, we had to test the media shoot and I volunteered to host that media test in my own backyard pool. And I wish you could have seen the look on my husband's face when we rolled up that day. Crew, mermaids, cameras and all. We still get a chuckle out of that. And the experience really turned out to be spectacular. Spectacular, and we learned a lot from my backyard test. That's cool. <laughs> talk, <laughs> talk about kind of like that that mentality of just like going back to the mad scientist mentality, right? Just do whatever it takes yes. wherever you have to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. It worked. <laughs> I love it. You touched on it a little bit, these great innovations that we're making right here at Falcons in our X Lab. Two of those are going to be world's first at Kathmandu Park in Punta Cana, our Onyx Theater, the interactive theater, and then our suspended theater. So 
I'm sure you're looking forward to getting down there and experiencing it yourself with a bunch of guests around you. But um, tell us what you're what you're looking forward to the most oh, there. Yeah. Yes. And I absolutely will be there. I'm counting down the days. Um, this is the day we live for. It's the result of several years of our team working super long hours, sweating every detail, thinking up stories, creating illustrations, you know, drafting thousands of pages of design and construction drawings. And here is a fun fact. We've been developing and have developed uh, around 200,000 frames of media for this Kathmandu project Mm -hmm. in Punta Cana. And I can't think of a better place I'd want to be than Kathmandu Park Punta Cana on that day. I wouldn't miss it for the world. No, for sure. I wish we could all go with you. (laughs) We'll get there one day. We will. All right, Yvette. Well, thanks so much for being with us. You bet. It was fun. Thanks for having me. Fantastic stuff from all of our guests today. David Adelson, Brian Kornfeld, Lauren Prager, and Yvette Whitaker. To learn more about how Orlando Economic Partnership is propelling the city beautiful forward, visit Orlando.org. And to find out more about Synapse and how to get in on the action at this year's event, go to SynapseFL.com. And finally, we talked about the Synapse event being at the Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts. That is a gorgeous building. I highly recommend seeing a show there. Thank you all so much for listening. Please join us again next time for another episode of Experience Imagination. Thank you for listening to Experience Imagination, a Falcons Creative Group production. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast and share with your friends. To keep up with our latest news, visit us on the web at falconscreativegroup.com and follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future episodes, please email us at podcast at falconscreativegroup.com.